Howdy everybody, I'm Braden with EG4 Electronics and we're gonna talk about the EG4 12,000 XP off-grid inverter. Off-grid users are looking for a system that is reliable, cost-effective, simple to implement, and is able to handle the everyday experiences that they're operating in. Now, the 12,000 XP has a lot of industry leading specs that I could read off. You know, of course we have a 480 volt max input PV voltage, 44 amp, ISC inputs on the MPPTs, which means you can parallel and stack a lot of panels to input into here. But the main thing that comes with this is a 24 kilowatt solar input bus. That means that the 12 kilowatt AC output and the 12 kilowatt DC charging to your batteries can be run at their maximum continuous simultaneously. That means that as an off-grid user, you're able to power everything that you could possibly want on this in the daytime while still making sure your batteries are topped off ready to go as soon as the sun sets. But what does that mean for the off-grid user? Let's talk about the EG4 12,000 XP off-grid inverter. Now, a lot of other off-grid or other inverters that you may use in an off-grid setting have MPPTs built in but those are almost always rated at or slightly above, sometimes even slightly below, what the maximum continuous output of that inverter is. And therefore you would need to use supplemental powering, such as additional separate MPPTs, or maybe a routine generator used to charge your batteries up to full. With this, you're able to get the absolute most out of all of the solar that you could possibly have. But just because we have this massive solar DC bus built into this thing doesn't mean that we don't play nicely with those additional charging capabilities. We have a grid input and a generator input, both separate, that you can have as backup sources to your main power source being solar and batteries. You can auto start the generator to power your system. And this comes with a nice feature in GenBoost, which allows you to give a little bit of a nice bonus to your generator's output using the inverter and a little bit of battery power. Now, one thing I wanna cover with generator boost is that your inverter is boosting your generator's output and not the other way around. We recommend at least 50% of your inverter's output as a generator in the system, which means six kilowatt or higher, if you're going to use the gen boost feature, as you don't want your inverter's output to overpower what your generator's putting towards your system or your system can backfeed that generator because all of your sine waves and everything is being generated from the generator and your inverter is just matching that and outputting as though it is a kind of modified version of a grid tie system. This allows you to nicely, you know, add a little bit of power to your generator's output to stabilize sine waves and make sure that it doesn't overload and damage, you know, sensitive electronics, but it's not a patch for having a drastically undersized generator for a massive system, which is especially relevant with the 12,000 XP as you're going to have a 50 amp continuous output at 240 volts. Now, another thing with the 12,000 XP being an off-grid unit is it may be implemented in cabins or other situations that may not be monitored 24 seven or even weekly. You know, it could be a vacation spot that you only go to certain times of the year you may want to still keep this thing running in order to keep climate control in an area or to make sure that your system still works when you get back there. And with the EG4 remote monitoring site, you're able to not just remote monitor your system, make sure everything's A-OK, -okay, everything's all good in the house, but you can also change your settings remotely and configure your system to your needs, make sure in real time things get adjusted and handled. That is one of the seamless integrations that the 12,000 XP has into the EG4 architecture. Now, as you can see here on the front, we do have some switch gear that's visible from the outside. We have a load breaker, smart load breaker, and battery breaker that's included embedded into the 12,000 XP, which will save money on implementing it into systems as you won't need to source those breakers for other things. But what the smart load breaker can do for you is actually put in a non-critical backup load into your system and be able to dynamically control it using this port right here. Effectively, you can have a couple of different things on this, whether it be AC coupling, an existing solar system that you want to um, 
get that extra power in, which, you know, if you already have 24 kilowatts of solar, I don't know how much more you'd want to even bother putting on this thing. But if you do have those existing systems, you can put it right there on the smart load port, or you can utilize one of two additional modes known as power shedding and load shedding. Power shedding is when you have an excessive amount of power coming in, which let's be honest, may just well happen with 24 kilowatts of a solar array. And if you have that excess power, your batteries are full, your loads are being covered right now, what are you gonna do with that? Well, you can put that into your smart load. And where this could be especially useful is something like a well pump, which I often reference being useful you can power a well pump to fill up a tank as needed when you have that excess power. And then of course, when you don't have that excess power, it doesn't end up at incidentally using that to fill up the tank. It will wait nicely for when you do have that auxiliary power to use. Conversely, load shedding can be used to drop off any loads whenever you reach a certain threshold on your battery charge. Say for example, you want to charge your electric vehicle on your off-grid system. Of course, you're gonna have limited production if you're just running off solar and batteries. So you don't want your car to charge anything more than what would be 70% of the batteries total. What you can do is set your battery drop-off threshold to 70% and say you're starting at 90. Once your battery goes down 20%, hits that 70 threshold, it will disable that smart port and your car will stop charging. So you are able to pull a little bit out of your system without it requiring you to manually be there and watch how much power you're drawing. The XP series of inverters is designed for the off-grid user's needs, and the 12,000 signifies that you have 12 kilowatts of power to output towards your loads. Now, with an off-grid inverter, it is very, very important to size your inverter adequately as you don't want to overload its output or underutilize it. Between handling the loads that you might experience and generating the power that you're going to need as an off-gridder, 12,000 XP has you covered. Check out the link in the description for more videos around this awesome unit, and make sure to visit eg4electronics.com for access to the latest information. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like the video, and leave a comment down below. We'll see you next time.